Every single shot that you just witnessed from all these ads is using Power Window. When we think about Power Windows, the first thing that comes to mind is either make the image brighter or darker, just like a traditional vignette. But it is nothing compared to the kind of stuff that I'm gonna be showing you in here. The real magic begins where that basic knowledge ends. After learning this, you're gonna realize why you haven't delved into doing this earlier. And speaking of that, if you really want to level up your grading game, I have an absolutely free training. All your burning questions that you needed the answers to for the last couple of years comes with practice footage so you guys can actually implement what you're learning. Plus, I'm throwing in my ultimate LUT in there for free that you will unlock at the end of the training. Link to the training is in the description. Check it out after you finish watching this video. And guys, we still have over 50% of you that are not subscribed to this channel. So if it is helping you and if you are coming back, then please, please do me a favor. Just pause for one second, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you will be notified about my future content and make sure to share this video with your filmmaker friend. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so now we're inside Resolve and I'm gonna be taking you through three completely different secret advanced techniques when it comes to power windows. Most of the time when you see a shot like that, the first time you're going to start using power windows is gonna be for vignettes, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. So if I go here, power window, and create a vignette, then you're gonna feather it out. And if I hit Shift H, it tells me like what I'm selecting. Okay, so like right now, I'm affecting everything inside of this and then it's like a really nice feather. So I wanna invert it so I can affect the outside and leave the inside as is. So sounds cool. And then normally what people would do is like, you know, they'll just go in their offset or in their gain or gamma and pull that down. It's very important to know which exact parameter and tool you have to use to even do that. So let's just uh, for a second put this to parade or let's just say our Y channel waveform. And let's just say if I use my lift and pull this down, look what I'm just doing, like this right here. This looks very, very unrealistic. This does not look right, okay? So this is not the move. And if we look at our waveform, like we're crushing our blacks and this just does not look natural, okay? So you don't wanna do that. What if we use our gain? So let's do that. If I pull everything down using my gain, look at like how it's just making the entire image uninteresting and lifeless. I mean, look at what's happening here, like this area right here. It just looks so fake and choked, like the highlights just do not look natural. So one of the best ways to go about creating a more natural vignette, you can either use your custom curves and just grab something from here and start pulling it down or just use gamma. If you're just starting out and if you just wanna end up with like really good results, because look at what Gamma is doing compared to lift or gain. Gamma is giving you the more realistic grounded image. It's just basically pulling all the colors that were kind of thin and all the, where the exposure was sitting and is bringing it down, pulling it down while still keeping the, the punch and the highlights and then still keeping information in your shadows. And you end up with something like that. So that's a much better result. But let's just go and do something. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just actually gonna save it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. The advanced technique that you should be using, you wanna create a window patternless. You can't even spot it. And secondly, it has to be light motivated. So what am I talking about? I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna create a custom shape. And I'm looking at the light. It's dark right here. It's bright right here. I wanna put the focus right on my girl and want the light to be motivated. So I'm gonna create something like this. I'm just literally going off of like, what's happening in my image right now. And I wanna kinda create this sort of thing. So there's like a beam effect happening and then everything else is kind of feathering out. And I'm gonna go ahead and just invert it. So we're only selecting the outside of what we're trying to do. I'm gonna go back in my gamma and I'm gonna pull it down. Let's just go ahead and soften it. So now we have three different options compared to our regular window that only gives us one option, right? Which is just like softening the whole thing equally. Here, we get to decide how we want to soften it. So if I go here and pull up the window, I get to go, do I want to just like bring it in a little bit on the inside and then go even really wide on the top end? So now it's just like way more natural. Like just look at this. Like how natural that response is. 
And basically, I didn't get to come in and affect her so much by doing that. So now if I go to our previous, like right here, you can see we're really affecting everything. Whereas here, I should look at her and then this contrast on the wall looks really nice. And then it does a perfect contrast with all the warm tones that we have in our image. And that's exactly what we're getting here. Moving on to our second example, and this is going to be a really fun one. You guys are going to love it. So one of the things that we constantly see in really highly stylized shows like, say, Shogun, so let me pull, or Dark, let's just pull this up. And if I go to this shot right here, pull this up and kind of show you what's happening. Look at what's happening on the edges. So one of the most advanced uses of vignettes and power windows is not to just always make it brighter or make it darker. That's just such a beginner step, but a much more sophisticated way to use power windows is like when you start getting into that, where you're creating texture by using chromatic aberration and maybe grain. And then maybe you're just like cooling off the edges and bringing the saturation down while putting the emphasis in the middle. Like there's so much more to it. So let's just try to mimic some of that. And I'll give you another example. So let me, if I can find Shogun right here and look at this shot. I mean, oh my God. Like, look at what's happening here, right? Like all this chromatic aberration that's happening on the edges, we can see it like right here. And then if I take you to up here, I mean, come on, like, look at this, right? Like, look at all of this compared to like where the actual focus is. So that just makes it for such a juicy image. So let's do exactly that. So we have this image, looks beautiful. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually this time just use a regular vignette. And let's just use it something like this and keep it light motivated. So the light is coming from there. So we're gonna keep it somewhere around here. And we also want to just make sure that this area stays in focus, okay? And then what we're just going to do is we're going to do Shift H and see what we're doing. And let's just feather it out a little bit, invert it, feather it out a little bit, uh, make sure that the face is perfectly fine and everything else we want to affect. Now I'm just going to go in and type in this right here, Prism Blur, okay? One of the OFX. I'm going to drop it on. And as soon as I drop it on, it's very, very heavy and it looks very, very cheap. It does not look anything like what we're seeing here, which is like the chromatic aberration. And then, you know, your halation is very controlled. It lo looks very sophisticated. This just looks horrendous. So let's undo it. But it's always good to start really extreme and then pull back. First thing that I want to do, the biggest culprit here is our aberration distance. So let's control that. And if I do before and after, this is looking way better. The next thing I want to do is I want to control my blur strength. So I'm going to pull that back. But the one thing that I do want to actually accentuate is aberration strength. So if I pull that hard and then I just keep going back in my aberration distance and keep bringing it closer, I now create a very, very interesting look. And if I just come here and do before and after, I mean, just look at that. So we can control the aberration strength, actually make it more, and then go under aberration distance and pull that back a little bit to something like that. Now I wanna go in my vignette size and actually start doing that. Why? Because again, go here and look at what they're doing right here. It's crazy. So we can do that too. We can go pretty heavy if we want to, like it's up to us. But if I were to keep it somewhere around here and if I do before and after, so let's just say we just go easy on the vignette a little bit. But if I do before and after, like look at the kind of interesting, very realistic grammatic aberration we're creating. I mean, look at this, how beautiful this is. What if we take it one step further and this light that's coming through, instead of having it like more orange, have it more magenta and add some cooler tones. So again, which parameter, which tool you use is gonna make all the difference in the world. And we've learned that Gamma is one of those really good tools to do things like that because it's basically leaving your highlights as is, leaving your shadows as is, and actually getting in the bones of your image and manipulating the colors in the most natural way possible. So I'm just gonna go in my Gamma and I'm gonna start doing that. So I'm going to just like really go there, kind of exaggerate it and put it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, look at the edges. And then look at this before and after, and just like, look at the edges, like right here, before and after, like even right here, how we're creeping in that magenta. And then in turn, what it's doing is this, like, look at now how interesting our image is getting. 
So it's going from like this, which there is no focal point, even after they have nice cocoloras going on on her. But here, not only there's more light in this area, but then it's warmer. And then everything around it is just cooler and kind of just falls off. Now, if we just play it through, like, come on, it has like this feel that we're seeing here. Very different than what we created here. I just want to take a second and tell you guys, like, if you guys are enjoying like these advanced techniques, I have a masterclass that has over 30 plus hours of this. And it comes with our community where you can submit work and get tailor-made feedback. And just like look at the kind of clients that our students are working with, over 7,800 students. It comes with a refund policy, so you have nothing to lose. I'm going to give you guys $100 off if you're watching this video. And if you're just a generalist, you're not necessarily going the path to be a colorist, then I have Kazi's Toolkit where you can get high-end Hollywood looks in minutes with zero learning curve. We have over 1,000 active users and they're absolutely losing their shit. So you can also save $100 on that. Links to both are going to be in the description below. Check it out. We have limited quantities per month. So take advantage of that. Let's get back to the video. Now let's move on to this example, which is a little bit more advanced because this is where we're going to be doing window stacking. So what do I mean? So this is a spot that I worked on. It was for Universal Studios and the client came back and they were like, hey, this globe in the back, like we want to pop that out. And I said, perfect, let's do that. So, you know, let's just create a shape uh, in the shape of that globe and bring it to something like this, something like this, put it somewhere around here and like, you know, even control it a little bit more control it a little bit more because literally that's the area that they want to put more love in. And then again, what are my options here? What do I want to use? So I can use my gain to bring it up a little bit here because most of the time in situations like these where we have a little bit of highlights, but they're kind of suppressed, gain is a good option because it's just going to add that pop. We can use our gamma a little bit too to like really get more detail in like the lower end and then use my gain to bring it up a little bit more. But if I do before and after, I mean, what is going on here, man? Like, how are we going to protect this, but, you know, put more love in the back? And then more importantly, we want to feather that out because if I do shift H right now, that's what's happening. So let's go ahead and feather that out quite a bit and now come out of it. And now it's looking very good. The background pops. The Universal Studios in the background now is popping 100%. But again, it's not good enough. Like, do what's happening to my dude? This is not good at all. OK, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and track this. So we're going to go in our window and let's just track our window. So the windows track looks great. It's locked in right in the back. So that main part is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my magic mask. And what I want to do is I want to select my dude and I'm going to be using their new magic mask with Resolve 20. It's going to work like magic. You're going to watch. <laughs> work like magic. So we're not going to be using the legacy style where we're going to be creating swirlies here. We're just going to click right here. And what did that do? So let's click right here and see what it did. So it just selected our boy. I'm going to hit better. So it just like does this way more smoother job. And now all I want to do is I want to invert this. So I basically canceled out this from that, from this window. Okay. And now if I do before and after, you can see what's happening. We're only affecting the background. We're leaving him as is. And it's just absolutely perfection the way it's done. But now we have to actually go ahead and track this. So we're going to do exactly that. We're just going to quickly track forward and backwards. Look at this. We brought up the background and we left our homie as is. So this is before, left him as is. And then the background popped out. The use cases for power windows are just absolutely endless. You can even do mix and match. You can now actually bring in this that can go later down the road and then create that, which I actually did on this ad. And then I had textured vignette going on on top of it. And then sometimes you will also be doing things like that, where you're going to be either controlling or adding more emphasis on just like the overall look, like how you want to shape light. And you can do all of that with power windows. The possibilities are endless, but most importantly, you need to know which parameters you have to use and how many different ways you can manipulate your image while staying disappeared 
from the entire picture. So nobody can pause and go, oh, I love what the colorist did. That will always be the name of the game. So let me know in the comment section below, which of these techniques did you find most useful and you cannot wait to try? And also, which of these techniques have you actually been using? If there is anything that I missed, absolutely share it. So I will pin the comment and then have other people try to implement that as well. If you have any content suggestions, let me know. And do not forget to check out all the special links in the description below. Until next time, peace fam.